All right, hey dancers, um, welcome back to our channel. Uh, my name is Julie and I'm the owner here. Um, I'm here today to attempt my very first time at painting a pair of point shoes. So in November here in the Birch Valley Online Studio, we are doing a dance that I'm gonna choreograph to the Nightmare Before Christmas song um, and character Oogie Boogie. So I have a um, way over the top green sparkly tutu and a giant green bow headpiece and I would like some point shoes to go with it. So we're not doing the dance on point per se, but um, I want to be able to have point shoes to match my little outfit because um, you definitely know that there will be pictures on my Instagram at Julie the Ballerina. There's no way I'm going to wear a green sparkly tutu and do this dance and not just take a million pictures. Um, you get where I'm coming from, right? Okay, so I've never painted point shoes before, but Josephine over at the point shop, who I love, and we have tons of videos on our channel and channel with us, because um, she loves adult dancers too. Um, she's us, we have a program we help dancers get up on point virtually in our online studio, um, getting up on point for the first time or helping dancers already on point really get some deep point technique. And she uh, is super, super helpful and helps our dancers get fitted. Um, virtually. So she'll do virtual fitting and mail you the shoes. It's amazing. She's awesome. Josephine's awesome. So she posted a video on how to paint your point shoes. I'm going to give it a go. Um, like all live videos, like if you guys watched my arm tutu video from a few weeks ago, I did mess it up live with you all here. Um, so it could happen, but that is the excitement of live. Um, so while we're here, um, I think it's going to be pretty just mundane painting the shoes for the most part. So if you guys have questions about ballet technique, about my journey with ballet, about anything ballet related, let me know in the comments and give me something to talk about while I paint my point shoes. Um, so that we don't sit here in awkward silence while I paint my point shoes. Um, I always have lots to talk about, but it's always fun to hear from you guys what you want to hear. So. Let's get going. Always gotta be hydrating. I drink gallons of water. So much water, always water. Great to see you all joining me here today. Um, those of you here in the US know it's election day. So if you're here and uh, distracting yourself from, from the day, that's awesome. It's always good to do something fun and positive. So here we go. I have basically these little sponges that Josephine was using, um, with these little, um, uh, paint sponges and then I have just um, she recommended there's like special point paint but she also said any acrylic paint would work fine so I just have this acrylic paint that I picked up at Walmart it was like two dollars a bottle one dollar a bottle I may have only needed one bottle but I really didn't want to get them halfway through the project and have to go get another bottle um, she did mention um, in her video that when you paint your shoes, they do change size a little bit and they get a little bit smaller. Um, so I'm using dead point shoes and I'll make sure to like use them during the week to try to get them to stretch out a little bit before I want to take pictures and then this weekend. Hi, Danielle and Solange. Great to see you guys. I just saw you guys this morning. All right. So I have here just like a painting pad that I used in my college art class. Um, yes, I, I did take art in college. It was um, the first time I had learned how to draw. I just sort of assumed that people who could draw had already always known how to draw um, and that you couldn't learn it. But that is uh, not the way. There's always a way to learn everything. So I learned all about that in college. Okay, so she just started painting. I just I just did, did uh, went, went for it and we're just gonna do it, right? We're just gonna get started. So let's maybe start here. That feels like a good place to start. Move these ribbons out of the way. Although I have seen people like paint their ribbons too, which would look really pretty. You guys think I should paint the ribbons? Or should I leave the ribbons pink? What should I do about these ribbons? I feel like if I'm not gonna paint them, I should safety pin them. Just like painting. This is a pretty cool color. It's gonna look great with that green too, too. Okay, this is like definitely gonna take a lot of paint because the satin is just like absorbing it. Paint them, we've got to vote for paint them, awesome. Do we have a second taker for paint the ribbons? I wonder if the bottom as I'm using it is going to wear off the paint. I don't actually know. Like I said, I've never had painted point shoes before. I've never had um, colored point shoes and I'm actually really excited about this. Another vote for paint them. Awesome, all right, I'd say two votes and I kind of would lean towards painting them too. I wonder if they'll get crispy. I don't know, we'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> 
Hi, Dad. Good to see you. Always, always a big supporter. Always a big fan. My dad helped install all of the floors in our Denver studios when we still had them. He's over there in the comments. Dads are the best. Anyone agree? Dads are the best. He also made these wooden plaques, um, carved wooden plaques with the Brooch Valley logo and like little pearls in them. They're super awesome. Uh, my dad loves my light up tutu and suggested that he could make one that blinks. How cool is that? And then one of my Instagram followers um, suggested that he should make, are you still listening dad? Um, she suggested that you should make one that blinks that synchronizes with my music so that I could have like a musically synchronized sparkly tutu situation. Um, light up tutu. So that's the request. That's the word on the street. So we can maybe get this oogie boogie situation it's like that um it's like that house you remember dad there was like that video of the house with the lights on it that was synchronized with some music and it was like really popular online my dad should definitely make tutus hear that dad we've got a new project for you we've got a new project for you as the winter comes and you can't work on your cars you didn't know you were going to be the star of this youtube video when you came on to chat with me did you i know you never know <laughs> that project is secret you can't talk about that on the internet that project is secret uh let's see uh tina is not going to help with this project she is, it's still sleeping time for them the dog so tina's my spanish greyhound she's my black dog if you've seen her on my instagram account um tina came all the way from spain um galgos are for hunting whereas english greyhounds like otis are for racing and so Tina's a hunting dog. Oh my gosh, you should see her. We have a neighbor who lets her cat out um, outside and Tina just like goes berserk. Wanting. Anyways, she's a hunter. She's totally a hunter. Um, she came all the way from Spain. So in Spain, they're, um, these goggles are used for hunting and um, uh, in, in many cases are just abandoned on the street. And so this rescue rescues the dogs and, and our rescue here in Denver flew some dogs over from Spain. So Tina has like a Spanish passport and everything. She's adorable but she's still sleeping. They're very sleepy dogs. They sleep about 20 hours a day. So she's still having her morning nap. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. She She's still having her um, morning nap. So she won't get up probably for two more hours. Um, on the topic of painting shoes, I'm a black woman, not quite near point work yet, but I'm aware that point shoes are pretty much always pink. Aren't they supposed to match your feet? Uh, yeah, they are. And um, there's a couple of uh, things you can do with your point shoes. Yeah, um, is exactly as Danielle mentioned in the comments, brands are starting to make them in more skin tones and more colors. Um, it used to be that you had to paint your point shoes like this all the time, which is obviously um, a lot of a lot of work to have to paint a point shoe. I mean, it's already a lot of work to sew all the ribbons and the elastics on and stuff. So you used to have to paint the point shoe to match your skin tone, but now uh, many of the brands are releasing um, other colors of point shoes, um, many different skin tones. So look them up. I know Gainer Minden is one of them. Um, it's either Capizzi or Block, I can't remember, or both. Danielle, do you remember? Do you know? Um, yes, so launch. Great things come from Spain. Tina came from Spain. <laughs> Tina is Tina is the best. She came all the way from Spain. So we think she might actually speak Spanish, right? Should we should we start giving her commands in Spanish? She might know sit in Spanish. She's not very responsive in English. It could be because she's not a responsive dog or because she speaks Spanish. It's unclear. Um, I don't know the other brand, Vanessa, um, that, that has the, has the color point shoes. I definitely know Gainer Minden and either Black or Capizio, but a lot of the bigger brands are really starting to, um, release, uh, tights, slippers, um, point shoes, all of that in other skin tones, um, all of that so that you can, you can have it match your skin tone, which is, which is awesome. Um, love to always see the changes in the ballet world, keep it. Keep it relevant, keep it exciting, keep it matching the times. All of that is is uh, really important because the times are always changing and we want ballet to, to, to serve, to live the test of time, right? We want ballet to stick around. Uh, Capizio and Block, perfect, so launched. Thank you for the Intel Block and Nicolay Grishko, awesome. All right, dancers, do I paint? the fabric right here. I feel like I've got to paint the fabric, right? So I paint the fabric. Let me know, let me know what you think as I'm as I'm going around the edges. I feel like I have to paint that fabric. Wouldn't it be weird if it was just like sticking out and was pink? I feel like that would be weird. But it feels weird to paint the fabric. I don't know. I guess I'm already painting fabric. I guess that's not really any different. 
See, this is the thing about doing it live, right? You guys can hear all my decision-making process. I, I, I'm not going to paint the shank. I did notice that um, she didn't paint the shank. Um, yes, Danielle. I mean, you already know like five languages, Danielle. So I think you could start learning Spanish. I think you could do it. What? Yeah, you know German? Dutch? French? Do I remember from your podcast? is like a test. You speak a fourth language. What's the fourth language you speak, Danielle? Oh, English. <laughs> that one is the, uh, <laughs> the one I take for granted here. <laughs> oh, man, too funny. All right, so we're painting this. It's pretty awesome. It's, like, pretty cool so far, right? Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Paint the fabric, not the shank. Yeah, I agree. The, the shank is weird, right? The shank would be weird to paint. It's actually, it's actually pretty cool. I was uh, very unsure what to expect about this. I don't know why I decided to do this live. That makes, I feel like I really could have done this and recorded and then made it fast motion for you guys. Especially because I didn't know what I was doing. But hey, sometimes, sometimes you just, it's nice to see things happening live because you see them happen recorded and the person making it always edits out those decision-making processes. And then when you do it yourself, sometimes it's hard to know why they did what they did. So here we go. We get to do it live. We get to do it live. English is becoming second nature. That's awesome, Danielle. That's awesome. <laughs> Multilingual classes. That's right. I know it would be so fun to teach a class in Spanish. Um, I'm working on, right now we're learning more verb tenses, which is awesome. I need to start learning the body parts in Spanish so I can start teaching in Spanish. Bye, Dad. Good to see you. I'll see you online afterwards. I'll show you a picture of the shoes. Um, so I am learning Spanish. It's super fun. I, I really enjoy it um, because it's so like, you know, I had someone reach out to me. I had one of my followers reach out to me because I posted on Instagram something about me being a uh, web developer and I'm starting on a software project for the studio um, and uh, adjusting off my web development skills because my degree was in computer science, my uh, college degree was in computer science, and then out of college, I worked as a programmer. Um, I worked as a, a web developer for a few years. I worked at um, Street Easy, which is a real estate company, um, real estate listings company in New York City. And then um, there was, they were bought by Zillow, which um, many more of you may be familiar with, at least here in the U.S. I don't think Zillow is international. I don't actually know. Good question. They are public, so they're big. But anyways, um, then I moved to um, Schoolkeep, which is a learning management system company as a developer, and then became a product manager there instead. So I kind of managed the development team and managed the product lifecycle. And then all, you know, quit all of that really about six months into owning Broche Ballet. So actually for about six to eight months, I was working a full-time job. Um, I was working my full-time job remotely for the company in New York while I was opening and getting Broche Ballet started. And so then I, at some point, really decided to <laughs> make the leap and leave that professional career behind and do Broche Ballet full-time um, when it started kind of getting big enough and having enough traction. Um, so she, she reached out to me because I, I posted something about being a software developer and she was like, wow, I feel like I never see anyone doing software development and engineering and all that stuff and who's ballet. Um, but I feel like it's actually so common ballet language, um, engineering. I feel like there's so much problem solving. There's so much pattern recognition. There's so much uh, detail. Um, there's lots of times when you're working on something and something totally unrelated is broken and you have to fix that before you can keep going on the initial problem. There's so many similarities between all these things. And I've actually found in our studio that we have so many people doing engineering, lawyer, accounting, these like incredibly detailed um, and uh, sort of, uh, very detailed work and job. So I feel like it's actually really, really similar. I feel like it scratches the same itch. And I always feel like I'm debugging my own technique and debugging everyone else's technique. And I think that's why I find teaching so entertaining um, because it's like sort of a debugging process to see what's working with everyone's technique and, and where we need to keep going. Um, Oh, yes. Yeah, so lunch. I know we could start studying the body parts together. It'd be really fun. I bet there's people who um, speak Spanish who don't. I don't even know if, if there's a market for Spanish ballet classes or if there's anyone teaching ballet in Spanish. I actually don't even know. I haven't looked. Um, 
<laughs> but certainly I would talk slower, <laughs> which would be nice for the beginners because I know I sometimes talk too fast in class. Um, but if I had to speak in Spanish, it would be uh, I'd talk a lot slower and then it'd be good for beginners. Yes, Danielle, this is like the perfect outfit for St. Patrick's Day, isn't it? Oh my gosh, you guys just wait until you see the giant headband that I have to go with it. It's so over the top. Um, in many ways, like, so like this pandemic is obviously weird, right? Being locked down is super weird, but also I'm like getting obviously super into this whole dressing up at home thing. It's super fun. It's super fun. And I feel like I actually have a lot more confidence to dress up at home than out in public because out in public, you can't like change your clothes real fast. You just, you're like stuck wearing it for the whole day. And I feel like sometimes I get a little bit self-conscious when I'm dressed up so crazy. So it's actually really fun to dress up at home because I don't know, it feels like a little bit safer here. So I really like wearing all these crazy outfits. They're super fun. Oh, Vanessa, you're studying to be a software developer. That's so exciting. That's so exciting. Software development is great. I, uh, I, um, I ended up, I, I, when I was studying it, I enjoyed it a lot, um, but I always wanted something a little bit more interactive in my career. Um, and I would get kind of bored just doing one thing all day and kind of doing doing one activity. Um, so I, I really liked product management for that reason because it was so many different things. I was like working with customers. I was like managing client relationships. I was, you know, going on business trips to handle issues and doing so many different things. And it really kept me engaged and interested and certainly running this studio has been no different because when you are starting something you've never done before there's always something to learn and always different stuff to do so it, no two days are the same every day is a ton of work but no two days are the same and they're always interesting and they're always uh they're always a lot of fun always new stuff to be learning which keeps it interesting we're, we're making some pretty good progress here on this shoe um, some of you guys might be just joining, wondering what's going on. I'm painting a green point shoe. We're doing a dance here in November, inspired by the character Oogie Boogie in The Nightmare Before Christmas. And I want green point shoes to go with my outfit. We are not necessarily learning it on point, but I want all the photo ops and this will be great. And besides Josephine from the point shop just posted a video on how to do it. So I wanted to try my hand. So we're almost there. I do want to paint this drawstring casing. I guess I should paint the elastics too, huh? It would be kind of weird to paint the ribbons and not the elastics. Um, so I'll paint the elastics too. If you guys have any questions about ballet, I am happy to answer. Now I want to paint shoes, even if they're not point. Would it work on ballet slippers? I guess I don't see why it wouldn't work on ballet slippers. I mean, this is satin on it, right? I guess I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't see why it wouldn't work, I guess. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Do it, paint the ballet slippers. You can go live on YouTube <laughs> and let me know. We can do it on Instagram live together. I'll give you some tips. I don't know how to go joint live on YouTube. Um, so we'd have to do it on Instagram. Okay, we're going for this, the casing. It's actually a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. Actually, all of this is a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. I'm honestly not sure why I was expecting it to be hard. Uh, but I was actually expecting it to be more complicated than how this is going here. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I don't see why this wouldn't work on, on uh, flat shoes. How fun would that be, Solange? That would be pretty fun. Uh, yeah, this is just normal acrylic paint. I just got it at Walmart. Um, I don't know if you have Walmart there. Uh, just like, like Target, Kmart, uh, Safeway. Do you have any of these stores? over there in Spain. It's just like, it was like a dollar. It was like a dollar per bottle. Very cheap. It's not a, uh, it's not fancy paint. They do sell point shoe point paint, um, like specific for point shoes. And that might be more for people who are painting their shoes, like what we were talking with Vanessa about. Um, but this is just a coat paint. Looks good, right? Looks actually pretty good. I, I'm actually pretty excited about this. It's got a little bit of a shine in it because obviously there's no, never enough sparkles on anything. Okay, so we're gonna go for, we're gonna go for the elastics. I think this is gonna get a little bit messy because I feel like I need to have my hand in there to be able to keep it, to be able to keep it there while I do it. Okay, let's go for it. I mean, it should, wa it should wash off. But if I show up to class tonight with green hands, you guys are gonna know what happened. Hi, Kira, great to see you. Welcome, do you have any questions about ballet that I can answer for you while I'm here painting my point shoes? 
Okay, the elastics are definitely absorbing a lot of paint. So it's gonna take me a few, um, I'm gonna have to dip into the paint quite often here, quite often. Um, so yeah, again, Josephine did say that when they dry, they shrink a little bit. So these are dead point shoes. I am hoping that they will then become usable um, <laughs> after they shrink a little bit and they shrink down. I'm almost done here with this one. I'm going to paint the other one off of live. So if you have any questions that you want me to answer while we're here, now is your time to ask them. I don't know, what do you think, 10 minutes left maybe? So we're painting around. I wonder how long it'll take to dry. That is the next question. I'll probably try them on tomorrow and see how they're doing. Okay, just continuing on the fabric. I did also paint the drawstring, my little drawstring. I did paint it because it's sticking out a little bit. So I did paint the drawstring. It's like sticking out a little bit. Yeah, this is actually really cool. I think this is, I'm gonna paint every single old pair of point shoes that I own in different colors and just have like a rainbow of point shoes. This is going to get out of hand very quickly. Very, very out of hand, but that's all right. It'll, I, if I paint purple, it'll go with my purple light up too, too. Kira just started ballet. Welcome, welcome to the ballet world. Yes, there, when you have just started ballet, literally the sky is the limit. Anything you can improve, everything you can improve is helpful. It's so fun to be a beginner because everything is new. Everything is fresh. There's so much to learn. There's, it's such an endless world out there. Um, biggest things to start with, because um, I know it can get kind of overwhelming when there's so much going on in ballet. Um, biggest things to start with is uh, your turnout. That's the biggest thing, understanding turnout. I have gobs of videos on my channel about turnout, what it is, how to use it, where to find the muscles, how to think about turnout, all that stuff. Turnout is um, a, a type of motor pattern. So thinking about motor patterns being like swimming, walking, running. Turnout is also a motor pattern. Um, we're, we're training our body to move and um dance basically in a turned out position. We're developing new motor patterns um, and trying to get our body to move turned out. So that's what turnout is. That's what ballet is. Um, so that's kind of your, your fundamental that you want to start with is learning turnout. Second thing you want to work on is your core and your posture. Again, I have lots of videos on the channel about that too. Um, core and posture are going to be two really big things. The biggest thing that I see with everybody, almost everybody across the board universally is that by nature, by default as humans, we stick our tailbone out and we have a curve in our low back. We want in ballet to flatten that as much as possible. We want to have a flat spine, flat front of the hips. Um, ballet is, ballet likes a very, very flat posture, even flatter than say Pilates, so flat in the low back, so flat in the front of the hips. So core, Posture and turnout are the biggest places to get started. And then my other big tip is to just keep going, keep trying. There's a lot uh, to learn. There's a lot to know. Um, but every single day you learn a little bit, it's going to really add up to a lot in the future. So um, the biggest thing I wish I knew when I was 20, because um, I started at 17, the biggest thing I wish I knew when I started, and I think people told me this, I just didn't listen. That's how it always goes. All right, so real quick before I finish that story, we finished the elastics. I love the elastics because they look like they've taken a little bit of the shine. I did not paint the inside of the elastics. I left the inside of the elastics pink um, and I did just paint the top. So now I'm gonna do the ribbons. I'm gonna do the outside of the ribbons here. I don't think the inside will show, so I'm gonna do the outside. Um, so anyways, the last, the biggest thing I wish I knew when I was your age was, Really, um, it's always hard to boil it down and it's hard to actually take the advice to heart because um, a lot of times we don't hear it until we're ready to hear it, but really keep going. 
um, keep going, keep trying. Uh, when I was 20, I got discouraged and I quit for a few years. And um, I feel like if I had kept going, I'd be a lot farther now um, than, than if I had kept going um, or than if I had stopped. Um, I, I, I got discouraged. I felt like there was too much to learn and I felt like I could never get there. I felt like the road was too long ahead of me. Um, I felt like it was uh, just uh, like, I, like the fact that I would never get there discouraged me from even continuing to try. But realistically, the only way to get there is to keep going and to keep trying. So if you want it, if you want to get there, you have to just keep going, you have to keep showing up, even if every day is not that successful, even if some days are harder than others, or you don't feel like it or whatever, just keep going, keep showing up, and you'll eventually get there. Like after a while, years have gone by. I mean, I cannot believe that it's been 13 years since I started ballet. But after a while, you rack up the years and then all of a sudden you have 10 years of experience and you're really, really stinking good at it. It's amazing. But if you stop for those 10 years, you won't have those 10 years of experience. So just keep going. Just keep trying. I know there's a lot, but when you're a beginner, just anything you do, anything you can think about or work on is helpful. The, the, the sky is the limit for a beginner dancer. You don't have to worry about working on the perfect thing. You don't have to worry about getting better every single session. It's really about showing up and continuing to try every single day. That is the biggest thing that matters. Yes, Solange, that's right. Keep going every single day. Solange was on our podcast um, recently. And uh, one of my favorite quotes from her was that, uh, you know, the way you the way you live your days is the way you live your life. So if you want to be a dancer, then dance every day. And then you are a dancer. Make sure every day you have something in your life that is what you want to be and who you want to become. Every day matters. Every day. Yes, Daniel, we're still improving every single day, right? There's never an end to it. Someone sent me a picture of themselves dancing um, in a very fun costume, but said that they, they looked at that picture and said that everything looked wrong and they had so many things they wanted to improve. And I was like, oh, girl. I still look at pictures of myself all the time and I'm like, I still see hundreds of things I want to improve, but that's the point. That's why we're trapped in this world of ballet because we love to improve and we love to see all the things that can always get better. And it's just like a wide open field of possibilities and getting better every day. And that's exciting and fun. And it's just that we're, it, it doesn't end. The improvement never ends. And that's why we both love and, and be frustrated by ballet. It's sort of a double edged sword. So keep going, keep trying, work on your core, work on your turnout, work on your mindset, work on your positivity, start to believe that your hard work will pay off. That's a big thing to believe that the work you put in is worth it, that the work you put in will eventually turn into something bigger than you could ever imagine. You have to believe that or else you won't bother continuing to try. So work on your body, work on your mind and keep going. And welcome to the Valley World, Kira. We love to have you here. It's exciting. I love it. So uh, just a quick summary here. Went on a little tirade there. But I really, I'm really passionate about continuing to go because I um, wish I hadn't uh, left ballet for as long as I did when I was younger. I, I, I had a lot of work to do on my mind. I had a lot of work to do on myself in order to keep going. And I just wish I can share and help someone else who is in that boat, no matter your age. Um, find the courage to keep going every single day and find the courage and the ability to know that your work pays off and your work matters and that every day is important, even if you don't feel like it was your best day on record. Um, so this ribbon went pretty well. I am kind of laying it flat to paint it. It actually went better than I was expecting. Um, either that means that this isn't that hard or I don't know. It's maybe it's just not that complicated. Again, I'm not sure why I was thinking this was going to be so hard, but there you go. <laughs> now, you know, it's not as hard as it looks, or if it doesn't look hard to you, then that's awesome too. <laughs> you are welcome, Kira. You're very welcome. And if you want to take up Solange's idea, paint a pair of ballet flats and let me know how it goes. That'll add some fun and excitement to your day in your ballet training. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just like trying to paint. I'm kind of painting like, as you can see, like towards the end of the ribbon, I feel like that's going better than trying to pull it this way. Cause I can kind of hold back. Um, I am getting lots of paint on my hands. So there is that I will try not to touch many things until I wash my hands. I will do my best, but I may end up with green paint on my face before this day is done. 
All right, everyone just joining. I'm painting a pair of green point shoes. It is turning out fabulously and I'm so excited to wear them. I can't wait to wear them. Um, I will probably let them dry today and try them on tomorrow. So go follow me on Instagram at Julie the Ballerina if you want to see how they turn out. Um, because there will definitely be pictures of this on Instagram. Okay. Uh, any last questions you have? I have just this one last ribbon to paint before we wrap it up here. Um, it took me, what is this? I've got 30 minutes on the clock here of painting, but I was, um, granted not like extremely focused as you can tell, chit chatting with everyone. My dad paid us a visit. So, you know, if you're doing it yourself, it probably won't take you 30 minutes, but if you're doing it with me, we can pretend like we're having a little chat and like we're having a little painting party. So that's fun. Um, okay. Almost done here with this ribbon. I wish I had just like a slightly bigger tarp here. Slightly bigger. Yeah, so this like regular acrylic paint seems to be doing fine. I mean, I'm not sure. I haven't had special point shoot paint, so I'm not sure um, like what I'm comparing it to. And we'll see how it goes. Like if it, if it crumbles off when I do demi point, I'll uh, keep you posted in the comments or in the description I need, I'll keep you posted. So if you wanna know how it turned out, I will include in the description tomorrow when I try them on, I will include it in the description um how it went and if I have any other suggestions for the record I used almost no paint there is literally no way I needed a second bottle I don't literally again like I have no idea why I thought this was going to use a gallon bucket and be complicated really wasn't that hard and used literally almost no paint so only <laughs> like one bottle is probably sufficient um it's a very small bottle it's only two ounces um uh, let's see, a uh, suggestion from Maureen, you might want to consider fabric paint since that supposedly moves with the material. Awesome. I will definitely, um, add, if this has trouble cracking, I will definitely check that out. Um, fabric paint, I assume that's different than puffy paint, which goes on the t-shirts. Although puffy paint could be super fun to decorate the box. That could be really entertaining. Maybe we'll take that into consideration for next time. But yes, if it does crumble off, I will leave in the description if I try my next, if I want to try my next color pair with a different type of paint. It'll be the true test. I'll try it on tomorrow. All right, I just have to do a little bit of rearranging to make this other ribbon painting happen. It's like just a little hard to get from that angle. And then we'll get that last ribbon. We'll double check it all and then we'll call it a day. So this, um, this how-to came from Josephine at the Point Shop. She's awesome. She has uh, so much great content on her YouTube channel. So much great content. So helpful. Um, and I love anyone who is out there trying to like, demystify point shoes and make point shoes seem less like a mystical thing. Um, I think point shoes are... Uh, everyone out there is just like afraid of putting information about point shoes online for fear that someone out there will take their advice in the wrong way and will get up on point too soon or mess around and really injure themselves. So I think there's just like a lot of fear to put information on the internet about point shoes. And I totally get that. So unfortunately, I think there's uh, not enough information out there about how point works, how your muscles work, what it means to be ready for point, how to, how to properly learn point. Um, so if you, if that stuff is something that interests you, go check out my uh, previous YouTube lives. I did a YouTube live on what it means to be ready for point. Um, because I think it's worth taking the risk of putting that information out there to help people understand that point shoes aren't like this crazy mystical thing or like no idea, um, how to think about getting on to point. Like we know how to get people on a point in the ballet world. Um, but we're just, uh, there's just a little bit of anxiety, very, very well, rooted anxiety in getting that information out there because um, point is a more dangerous activity and we don't want anyone to get hurt or just take the advice in the wrong way. Uh, I'm gonna go over these elastics one more time here because they, they're, they're kind of absorbing the paint and I want them to be more green. Um, and then we'll wrap it up here. Um, question. Um, uh, going from gymnastics to ballet, it definitely is a very interesting transition, but a really, um, it can be actually a really smooth one. Um, some things that gymnasts have are uh, an intense body awareness. So like knowing where your body is in space is actually just one of the big skills that new dancers as adults develop. 
Um, because if you haven't ever done physical sports before, you haven't had to think about like where your pinky toe is or like where your elbow is. You haven't had to think about these things. But if you have had to think about these things and you've already gone through that training and you can just pick up with the dancing itself. So that's already an advantage there. Um, gymnasts also tend to be a little bit more fearless with their bodies, um, where you're not so afraid of physical sensations. Like a lot of us dancers, myself included, who didn't do anything before ballet, um, and ballet was our first foray into physical activity. Um, a lot of us are really scared of sensations like turning and being up on point because it feels rather scary and risky and all of that. But gymnasts who I've met, gymnasts, ice skaters, and horseback riders um, tend to be really fearless or like more fearless and will be more likely to try a pirouette or try things because it feels they're not so scared of how that physical sensation is going to feel. Um, so those of us who are coming into it with the fear, we have to work really hard on that on that mentality of getting over that fear and taking those risks with our bodies. Um, but if you already have that, uh, you're coming in with a little bit more of an advantage. Um, obviously there's definitely things that are different from gymnastics to ballet, like gymnastics mostly turns um, in on day dawn or inside, whereas we have to turn the other way in ballet as well. We turn both ways. Um, so that's always hard to get gymnasts to turn the other direction. Um, the way we point our feet is a little bit different. We want long, long extended toes, um, no curling of the toes in ballet because when we get in our point shoes, we don't want curled toes. We get blisters on our knuckles. We want long toes when we point. So the foot shape is a little bit different. Um, and obviously everything's turned out. So that's a big difference. Um, but there are, so the, those are kind of the main differences that I've seen with the gymnasts who I've worked with. Um, but generally, if you're coming from another physical activity, you have a little bit of a leg up because you already have a, um, a level of, uh, of um, uh, mind body connection and also um, uh, not so afraid of the different movements and the sensations. Um, okay, I'm just kind of going over this shoe. I'm gonna show it to you guys up close and bring, uh, come over to you so I can show you. I'm gonna try not to get any green anywhere. So there's the shoe. Check out that shoe, how fun is that? So I painted only the one side of the ribbons. I painted the elastics, the fabric, but I did not paint the shank. I left the shank that color. I don't think it'll take the paint anyways. It's leather, so I don't think it'll take the paint. It's not satin. And I think you'd be kind of slippery to have the paint on it. Doesn't it look awesome, Solange? Oh my gosh, I hope you try painting a ballet slipper. I don't actually have any old ballet slippers right now. That's shocking, because I almost always have like an old pair. Um, Maybe I'll get one just so I can paint it when these roll, when my current slippers run out. But yeah, this was like, uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Probably only take you 15 or 20 minutes if you were actually focused and not just chit chatting with people on the internet. Um, really fun. Thank you all so much for coming to keep me company while I painted my point shoe. Um, it was super fun to hang out with you here. Um, follow me on Instagram, Julie the Ballerina, to see these point shoes in action tomorrow. And again, I'll update the description with how it turned out so you can get an idea of how it turned out. And if this is how you look after you paint yours, leave me a note in the comments that you're also a very messy point painter. All right, dancers, have an awesome rest of your day. I'm going to try to hit pause on this live stream without painting my computer green. Oh my gosh, wish me luck and have an awesome day. Good to see you.